Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the Realm of Unknown podcast, a podcast that talks about all sorts of weird stuff, and if you're here, you're probably familiar with that or looking for it. Uh, so yeah, we don't have a lot of banter for the opening part for this episode. A lot of stuff hasn't really been happening. Uh, there's a few updates with life and stuff, having a move coming up, work's been busy, all that good, you know, average, I guess, uh, sort of things. Nothing too crazy. But yeah, I kind of just want to get into this episode. It's a bit crazy and it's a bit long in relation to my script. I don't know if the episode will actually reflect that or not, but like the script that I wrote out is like 14 pages. It It's really big. Uh, so I will be trying to not speed through it, but sort of condense it in any way I can. So today we are talking about a phenomena or also a sort of urban legend, which is also sort of a true yet highly debated story. Uh, it's crazy. It's, it's all over the place. Just roll with it. Uh, and honestly, it is one of my more favorite out there type stories because it combines a lot of my interests being, you know, unexplained creatures and mysteries as well as just kind of like general zoology, I guess. And today, we are going to be discussing a common folk legend over in the United Kingdoms known as the British Big Cats. So, buckle up. Um, it's a bit obscure if you are not sort of within the bubble of cryptids or monsters or urban legends. Uh, and even if you are here, it's a bit less heard of in a weird way. But But you probably have heard of it if you are entrenched in this sort of stuff at the very least some of the creatures that we will be discussing are sort of known elsewhere and fall under this bigger umbrella of british big cats um and we will discuss that when it comes to that point in the episode this, this opening i'm like trying to read off the fly like just kind of <laughs> but there's a lot to to kind of lay out before we actually get into the script part and like the overall timeline because it's another one of those timeline episodes of just breaking down dates because there's just reports and dates and milestones all this crazy stuff and uh, but the british big cats also go by a variety of other names that you might be familiar with they're known as phantom cats they're known as mystery cats uh they also go by the abbreviation of abcs which if you're wondering what that is uh, the A can be interchanged between either the word alien or anomalous. So alien big cats or anomalous big cats. Uh, but they all generally mean the exact same thing. All of them share sightings across the countryside of the UK. So encompassing you know both Britain, Scotland, Ireland. I don't think it really matters where on the aisles that you are. Uh, it's just everything. And I'm, I'm including Ireland, so just... For anyone who is out there is like, it's not part of it. It's technically included with this. <laughs> so just bear with me. And the creatures are generally described as being either panthers, pumas, or just large general feline creatures. Again, these are urban legends slash rumor sightings that are technically true, but it's not a set cat. It's not a set species is not like a set cryptid like a lot of other stories out there are this is very much as i stated in the opening uh a phenomena it is a weird culmination of numerous sightings that we will get into that all kind of funnel into this general umbrella term of british big cats and there's one quick thing i just want to bring up i'm sure a few people listening to this right now are probably a little bit confused as to why this is even a story because you're probably like you know this is just cat sightings you know they're animals we know they exist they're not cryptids in any ways it's not like some supernatural thing this isn't crazy why are we talking about this but it is it's it's we'll get to it uh so what makes this so fascinating or at least to me personally, and to a lot of people, because this is a fairly well-known topic uh, for people who know about it, or follow it, I should say, uh, is the fact that large carnivorous animals found within the UK just isn't a thing. So the British Isles, if people are not familiar with it, and this kind of goes into the whole zoology thing that I kind of 
like about this story and like about this general gist of things, the British Isles have, you know, fox, they have otters, they have some large uh, birds of prey, and there are badgers located, I think, up in like the Scotland area. I don't know exactly where in Scotland, but it's that area. But aside from that, they don't really have other large animals, more so in general. I mean, there's a lot of domesticated animals, um, but large uh, animals are not that common here, especially for predators or carnivores in general. That is just not a thing. Um, they don't, you know, roam the British countryside. It's just not a thing that's found on the Isles. Now, back in the day, absolutely. They, they was absolutely a thing. Um, Britain actually had a bunch of species that used to live there, which obviously are now extinct for, or I should say regionally extinct in some cases due to, to a variety of reasons. Uh, there used to be cave lions, cave bears, cave hyenas, which all have gone extinct, you know, several thousands of years ago across various time eras. But we also have more recently extinct uh, regional extinctions, which are things like the, the brown bear or the Eurasian lynx, which is actually, I think, in some areas being discussed to possibly be rewilded back into uh, the Isles. But as, like aside from the lynx, which I think was the most recent quote-unquote big cat, it's, it's not really a big cat, which was like several hundred years ago, and I'll talk about this in a sec, there, there weren't other large carnivorous uh, felines. I mean, the, the arguably largest feline of this sort of category in more recent-ish, and I say recent with large quotes, is the cave lion, which died off like over 30 million or 30,000 years ago. So what the heck are these, you know, British big cat sightings and why are there so many? And there are a lot. There are hundreds of reports nearly every year with accounts dating back to like the late 1700s. It is insane. And that's what we're going to be talking about uh, with throughout this episode, again, with the whole timeline and the whole sort of breakdown of sightings in general. So a few of the early ones, and this is kind of how we're going to break apart the episode. We're going to talk about some of the early ones, and then we're going to talk about mainly modern sightings, which uh, have kind of been collected from like, 50s, 60s, on to more recent times. Uh, and if you're familiar with the Patreon, actually, we did discuss one of these more recent accounts from last year. Like, So this is a very, very current thing, even to now. But let's get started with the sort of main bulk of the episode as we sort of go through. And after the list, and after all these sightings that we are going to be talking about, I'm going to go into some of the theories and explanations as to what the heck is going on. There's a few of them, and a few of them are more interesting than I think you would expect. So uh, bear with me, and I'm going to give a I'm going to give a warning now. I tried to do my best when it came to pronunciations, but there are not a lot of places out there that focus on every name. So. Bear with me. For everyone out there in the UK or who lived in Britain at one point or lives nearby, is like, he's pronouncing this wrong. Bear with me because there are a lot of names and a lot of, a lot of towns, a lot of neighborhoods, a lot of uh, counties, and it's just, eh. So, with that warning out of the way, let's get into the early sightings. Again, this is everything prior than like the 1950s slash 60s, and it's going to talk about, you know, the very earliest stuff in relation to the British big cat phenomenon. So first off, we are going to start off in the 19, or the 1820s with William uh, Cobet in his writings in which he titled Rural Rides in which he recalls how, while as a boy in the 1760s, so I believe this is the very first sighting, quote-unquote, he had seen a cat, quote, as big as a medium-sized spaniel dog. This feline that he spotted while he was a child climbed onto a hollow elm tree in the grounds of the ruined Waverly Abbey 
near Farmhand in Sowery. Later in New Brunswick, uh, he is quoted as saying that he saw a Lucifer, which is, you know, a lynx, essentially, uh, and quotes the following, and it seemed to me to be just as a cat as I had seen in Waverly. So he's saying it's very similar to the cat that he saw uh, the, in the first account. Now, there is actually, in relation to this one of uh, in New Brunswick, there is a Daily Express account, which, if you are not familiar, Daily Express is a uh, news... It's, it's, it's news, newspaper, that sort of stuff. Back in January 14th, 1927, in which another quote-unquote lynx was spotted in this area. Keep in mind that the Eurasian lynx, I believe, and I could be getting this date wrong, became regionally extinct. And if you're not familiar with that, regional extinction is when a species no longer exists in a set area, but is still found elsewhere. The link, the Eurasian lynx, I believe, became regionally extinct from the UK. Like, it's anywhere between like six or three hundred years ago uh, when it got like hunted to extinction. But I could be wrong. I I don't know which one it is. It's I'm just giving both as like a general time frame. Okay, so the next reported sighting, uh, the new forest folklore of the Stratford lion, lion spelled with a Y O N. Uh, tells of how John D. Stratsford pulled a giant red antlered lion from the ground at uh, South Babesley in the New Forest over uh, the year 1400. The story is first recorded in the uh, Margula, probably pronouncing that wrong too, uh, in the 18th century Bible. Uh, and later in the 20th century, sightings of the lion were recorded in the vicinity of the Red Lion Pub in Boulder. Uh, again, this was probably the most like fantastical sighting out there. Most of them, though, relate back to more or less big cats or felines that we are familiar with, uh, mainly within like the panthera genus. Uh, okay, so further back, uh, there is a medieval Welsh poem called the Bagor in the, sorry, uh, ugh, confusing how I wrote this. The poem, the Bagor, is in the uh, Black Book of uh, Camereth, which mentions that the Cath Pollog, which meaning like Pollog's cat or clawing cat, it, this is, this is, Another one of the fantastical ones. There's a lot of weird names. It's essentially a monstrous offspring of another like Welsh folklore. Um, Cath Pollog is very much not. It's not a thing. So just keep that in mind. Uh, it's just I threw that in there because it's one of the like it's quote unquote a written account, but uh, Cath is not. Okay, so that's the early stuff. You know whatever for most of them i think the most credible one is really just the accounts from william uh Kobeck, which he sort of has two personal sightings himself with one of them being you know backed up by the daily express having similar sightings you know you know like 100 years later but still relatively close you know compared to jumping to the 1400s you know so the modern sightings is what we're going to talk about now and the modern sightings of the British big cats is very much the the bulk of this phenomenon. A lot of people, you know, relate back to this. Uh, this is where everyone has their stories, has their accounts. Uh, this is where people hear stories from neighbors, relatives, that sort of stuff. Uh, and this is what we're going to talk about now. So the very first sighting is in 1959. The first possible sighting was reported in 1959 when police received a number of reports of a big cat uh, in the farmhand area, which we actually mentioned earlier, near the Sowery Hampshire border. Moving along in 1962 and 1963, uh, two further sightings were reported uh, in 1962 by waterboard personnel in Hampshire, and a third in the winter between the two years uh, of a cat like beast seen on the Bushley farm in Crandall, uh, Hampshire. 
However, the sighting that sparked interest within these two years for the media was actually shined a light on uh, in 1963 when a police officer sighted a supposed Shooter's Hill cheetah in the southeast London area. So now police are seeing it uh, rather than just being you know, called into this stuff. Uh, and again, the, this cheetah sighting is the one that sparked interest in the media between those two years, not like, you know, starting the whole big cat stuff, but between 1962 and 1963, the cheetah sighting happened in 1963 and then brought attention to the earlier two sightings. Next up in August of 1964. So a year later, a uh, bullock, which is a type of cattle for people who are not familiar again from the bush lease farm was found severely lacerated Following press coverage, numerous reports of contact with an animal dubbed the Sauri Puma began hitting the press. This ranged from, you know, pure rumors to those that were being taken very seriously by the local authorities. A plaster cast of a paw print measuring about 5 inches or 13 centimeters was handed to the Gaudingman Police Station in Sauri, which had an active file on quote-unquote big cats uh, that were harming livestock in that area at that time. The paw print was publicly displayed. Reports noted that its size implied that it had come from a very large specimen. People also noted that the paw print was not very similar to known puma species, varied in certain ways. The investigation or the investigative file was closed in the summer of 1967, uh, and the police station's logbook also listed around like over 350 sightings of alien big cats or ABCs occurring between the dates of September 1964 to August of 1966. So between two years. There are over 350 sightings of large felines in the countryside. Uh, this is also around the time when, uh, you know, the big cats are actually being mentioned in the reports, like as the name. So moving forward, you'll start seeing it develop a bit more. So with that August 1966 sighting, a former police photographer, Ian Burt, or Ian uh, Pert, took a grainy photo photograph of a cat facing the camera in, oh god, this is one of the hard ones, Warpliston with a larger-than-average body length. And there are a few photos, there are a few videos of this phenomenon, guys. Look it up. I'm not going to post any of them really to the Patreon or to the Twitter or whatever, uh, because they vary a lot, and they're all over the place between either being real or fake. So... I would take that into consideration when you look into this outside of this episode, especially with more recent accounts. Um, but always do that. Always question stuff. Okay, so two years later, after the 1966 photography uh, that was captured by the policeman, between 1968 and 1970. So in 1968, a farmer claimed to have shot a puma. Uh, however, he could not provide any evidence. This will also be a very... Uh, Consistent trait. After this, sightings gradually began to peter off, although a few paw prints were found in the snow in 1970, which again generated a flurry of more reports, uh, as this sort of stuff generally does. And throughout the 1970s, reports began to spread up across the country. The Beast of Exmoor, which I believe is what we discussed over on the Patreon, but it could be wrong. I'm pretty sure it's very similar to it. The Beast of Exmoor was reported uh, from Devon to Somerset, and the Stratford Lion, which we discussed earlier, was reported across the Red uh, Lion Pub, Boulder, as well as the Sheppey Panther, which was rumored to exist since the uh, sort of turn of the decade, so between the 60s and 70s. The Hartwood spans uh, fairly green, um, or I should say, it, it, I just kind of, I don't know why I wrote that. It lists out the areas where this sort of stuff is being seen. Okay, so still within the 70s, we're now in 1975. An eight-year-old boy was playing alone in the woodlands of 
Shining Fold, and this backs into a field of where you know where he was located, from which he alleges that a golden colored big cat, so I'm assuming like a lion or a puma, uh maybe a lynx, uh entered into or entered from the woodlands. Uh the cat walked west and stayed close to the edge of the field and the woods. Uh, while passing about 10 meters away from the boy, it turned its head, stared momentarily at him, before, with disinterest, carried on and walked away. Later on, after the boy reported this sighting, he was actually asked if this could have simply just been a dog that he misidentified, um, and he replied with no, uh, because it had a long, curled tail, a wide head, and it picked its feet up like a cat does, uh, however, it was the size of a big dog. So I'm assuming he's just referring to like how cats kind of very lightly walk on their feet. I'll give the weird caveat that some dogs are just kind of dumb and do like dogs are weird. Dogs can rage all over the place. So I, I won't rule out the possibility that it could have been a dog. But there is still, again, the possibility that it was also a cat. OK, so we're going to skip nine years uh, from this point to uh, 1984. This is when hair samples taken from Peaslick, a few miles northwest of the heavily wooded parts of the Greensand Ridge, were identified as a puma. So this is the very first like solid evidence that, hey, there was a big cat here. They have hair samples and it has been confirmed fully as a puma. Uh, in the previous year, an unclassified big cat dubbed Alien uh, featured in the Archers, which is a, um, if you're not familiar with this, this is a extension of the BBC, sort of like a radio drama of sorts. And the Beast of Exmoor uh, began to make national headlines at this point. Again, the Beast of Exmoor has been around since like the 70s or so, but this sort of phenomena is extending from like the countryside into the whole nation, and now people are knowing about it. At this same time, more reports came in from Scotland at this point of a callous cat that was shot again in the year 1984. Now, the callous cat, if you're not familiar, this is a very large black cat that was located again in Scotland. It was shot, and it is. I think it's believed, but I think it is fairly confirmed uh, that it is an interspecies hybrid between a Scottish wildcat and a domesticated cat. So if you're not familiar, Scotland has wild cats. It's a sort of population exclusive to Scotland on its own. Like they're up in the highlands and stuff. Uh, there's estimated between like a thousand or four thousand individuals. They're not that many. In which I I can't remember I don't I didn't write this down I can't remember if it came from like feral cats that got away from the area I don't know but this particular cat the uh, Kalos cat is this was fairly big I think it was like anywhere from two to three feet in length with like very well defined like muscle features. Again, it was a hybrid between the wild cats and also a domesticated cat that just got out. Um, it's not a formal breed or, you know, continuous species on its own. It's like very much like a secluded off branch. So that's interesting. If you want to look into it, do so. <laughs> Again, it's the callous cat. It's uh, spelled K-E-L-L-A-S if you want to look into it. Um, and we'll mention a lot of like actual citing names like we already mentioned the beast the callus uh the lion a lot of these have names that people just kind of prescribe to these things you know it, it's the news people are gonna sensationalize sensationalize a lot of this um so if you are looking into this and you're kind of confused you're like why is this all over the place it, it's because this topic pretty much goes all over the place it's just one of those things Okay, so continuing on, we are now into the 90s. Uh, the greater interest of the phantom cats have began to grow, and the headline stories of the Beast of Bodmin from 1992, as well as the Galloway Puma, which I believe, was this the one that we mentioned prior? I could be wrong. No, this is a different Puma. <laughs> Pumas are pretty common. 
both of those two, the uh, Galloway Puma and the Bodmin uh, Beast, those are being, uh, you know, getting more attention in the media, a lot of more attention on newspapers, the BBC, all that sort of stuff. Um, in the historic Buchan area of, oh God, uh, Aberdeenshire, uh, the creature is dubbed the Beast of Buchan and sightings are regularly documented. It's pretty common, this one. Within the same year, a Black Panther known as the Beast of Dartmoor, which you guys probably should be familiar with. Uh, other podcasts have talked about this one. It's also one that gets talked about a bit more on like YouTube channels, people that sort of talk about this discussion. It's one of the more, I don't want to say go-to sightings, um, but if you're looking into British big cats, it will be one of the more prominent ones that will come about. Because, and this is why, uh, it was reportedly seen by a group of 15 people, including M. Wartenberg, or Warburton, <laughs> in the summer of 2011 in the Halden Forest. So the original stuff sort of sparked up in the early 90s. However, sightings continued into the 2010s. Uh, there are many more news stories from different uh, parts of the country in relation to the Beast of Dartmoor. Again, if you want to look into it or you want us to do a bit more of a specific uh, research into the Beast of Dartmoor, let me know. I will. Uh, but again, it is one of the more prevalent sightings of uh, British big cats that you will find. Okay, so three years later we're on our little timeline, in 1955, the Sowery Advisor a newspaper reported a sighting that comes from police officer uh, Steve Ashcore outside hilltop of St. Teresa's School, Effingham. So again, this kind of follows the line that a lot of these reports are coming from like all sorts of people, not just like farmers off into like the deep, deep countryside. Uh, a lot of these come from like police officers who get called into the scene or have their own personal stories like this one right here. Um, and actually the next one on my list is very similar. So the next one on the list is from 2003. This comes from Detective Constable Stephen Afcroft, which same thing. Uh, he, I guess, gets promoted later on. Saw the same and or similar creature up in the I think it's the same area? No, it's not the same area. Up in the Holmborough Hill. This sighting was reported in June of 2003. Uh, it was in an area with sightings that logged within the following you know, year or so. There is another sighting from Peter Hines who was the warden of the uh, Hardwood. He, he's the warden of like a forest, so I guess he's like a park ranger equivalent, which his sighting came from the northwest area, I believe, of that area, of that region. Um, and again, both of these were recited within a 12-month period. So I'm pretty sure it's from like twenty or uh, 2003 to 2004. Um, however, I didn't really go into detail for Peter uh, Haynes because he doesn't really have too much in relation to his story. It's very similar to the one that uh, Stephen had in relation to the one that he previously had. So all three of them have pretty much the same story. Okay, so 2004. Again, I apologize for this all being all over the place. 2004, the newspaper added that residents of Avinger uh, Common, which is a neighborhood of woodlands and farmland area, it's a little bit rural, Residents of this region had reported that within the last two weeks, they had seen a, quote, big cat relying on the big cat survey of the British big cats organization. So at this point, there are now groups out there, uh, people that are looking into this, collecting this information, and people are now reporting to them when it comes to their sightings. So several residences of this area began reporting of a big cat roaming the countryside, roaming around their farmlands for about two weeks. I think it's like two to three weeks uh, is more accurate. Um, but this was taking place in 2004, but not a whole lot more extra details for that. I don't think anything came of that particular cat. The next year, in 2005, a Mr. Fowler visiting with his partner in the Winksworth Arboreum, 
sent their video camera footage to the local newspaper, which they reproduced in stills. The footage that they had sent to the paper was described as an animal with gingerly brown uh, hair, about the size of an Alsatin dog. It, it's, it's just a German Shepherd, if you guys want to have a reference. So they sent over the footage of a creature that they captured on film uh, that they are describing as having gingerly brown hair, about the size of a German Shepherd, but it was most definitely not a fox or canine. Sowery Wildlife Trust Ranger uh, Mark Havler believes that it was an Iberian lynx, which again, lynx are not indigenous to the British Isles anymore. Um, more particularly, I don't know why he thinks that it is an Iberian lynx. They are obviously found on the Iberian Peninsula, which if you're not familiar with, is Spain and Portugal, um, which I don't know why. I don't know. But regardless of that, though, within this time frame, within this area, uh, and particularly with this uh, wildlife ranger mark, there were at least like 15 calls of sightings within the following two weeks of what they are you know, both believing to be the same creature, one is saying it's a lynx, one saying, like, I don't know what it is, it's just not a dog. But at least 15 individuals call in for this particular animal. Reports the same year, so again, we're still in 2005, logged to the salary advisor, again, uh, their headquarters, were of more than one non-native wild cat in the borough of Guildford and the neighborhood districts uh, surrounding it. Some quote the following, spots of a bobtail and a sandy-colored animal suggesting a lynx. Others quote by saying uh, this part, no spots and a long tail, which could mean a puma. So everyone's divided. No one really knows what they're seeing. Everyone has different stories. Two resident walkers names were included when they published this overall report. Again, this is from the Saudi advisor. Or I should say the, the, the report that came across in the 1960s from the same thing. The reporter interviewed the animal liaison officer of Marwell Zoo outside of the sighted areas in order to assess whether or not the old and the new sightings could be linked. Again, the old sightings from the 1960s and onwards, uh, and the new sightings now in 2005. The liaison officer explained the need to uh, for significant breeding pairs within the wild, uh, you know, lifespan of an animal to have taken place, and the likelihood that this sort of thing could happen. Again, this is all in relation to the people being like, hey, could this same animal be around from the 1960s until now, like 40 years later? <laughs> and this this officer is like, uh, you know, you need to have like mating pairs. Like you can't just have one and have like keep popping up. Uh, the likelihood is like one in a hundred. Like the, the chances are really, really slim for like a multi-generational offspring to just keep, you know, going on. So we're going to skip a few years. So from 2005 now all the way to 2011. Again, we talked about one previously from uh, 2011, but this one is completely on its own. Uh, in the early months of 2011, so from I think January to March or April, a great number of sightings of a, quote, panther in uh, Schutz, North Lambertshire, steer, uh, stirred locals and began uh, to send in reports and sightings to the local press and news medias. After a couple of months, these reports ceased with the assumption that the quote-unquote panther had moved on to different areas of the countryside. A lot of these are kind of not the best endings, you know. Um, a lot of these don't have, like, a body being found or definitive proof being found. So who even knows what the heck happened here? Uh, but for several months, people were seeing a panther running around in North Lancashire. The next year, in 2012, one of the more recent reports was that the Essex lion, or a lion purportedly roaming around Essex during the summer of 2012. These initial sightings were from the Caravan Park, where uh, sightings of a lion began to 
coming in from the local area, mainly the very first accounts were from people hearing a lion's roar off in the distance, which, to be fair, would be terrifying if you're just in the UK and all of a sudden you're walking you know, along a rural trail and then all of a sudden you hear a lion roaring in the distance. I would be terrified. Uh, there was a photograph that was taken by one witness, and I will try to find that one. I could not find it while doing the research. Police advised local residents to stay indoors while they searched the area, but how they just couldn't find anything. Like, they literally just could not find anything. Uh, local zoos and visiting circuses were contacted. However, every single one of them reported that they had no escaped lions. A Miss Murphy later claimed that the photograph that she had sent in, or the photograph that was sent in, was actually it was actually a photo of her pet Maine Coon cat, Teddy. Now, if you're not familiar with a Maine Coon, uh, it's a type of cat sort of subspecies. They get fairly big, but I really do not think that the roaring of a lion could be mistaken for a Maine Coon. You know, the, the photo probably maybe, but like, obviously they were taking this very seriously. The police were telling people to stay inside. Uh, so who even knows? Uh, the next year in 2013, in a small village on the Shropshire Wexham border, two sisters reported seeing a large black feline with a third or a three foot stride or one meter, I should say. A uh, stride, jumping a fence and disappearing into the neighboring field. On returning in the next day, they discovered a large pair of paw prints, too big to belong to any sort of domestic cat that they knew of. A one-time zookeeper of Chester Zoo and Dudley Zoo, uh, Mr. Larkham, uh, agreed that the paw prints do not belong to a domestic cat. However, it is also too small to be a panther. For people who are wondering, when I say panther uh, in a lot of these reports, it's always the general term for panther, not what I think you're thinking of. So when people think of panther, I'm sure you probably think of like a black panther. The term panther is exclusive to the panther genus, or I think it's a genus, of big cats, which could be anything. It could be a leopard, it could be a a lion, a tiger, it could be a, uh, a jaguar. But when you think of panther, uh, think of any big cat, really, could be a panther, except for obviously cheetahs and stuff like that. So this zookeeper is saying that, hey, this paw print, yes, it's too big to be a domestic cat, but it's way too small to be a panther. So it could be a lynx. It could be something like that. Um, he believes that it could be a descendant of the Shropshire jungle cat from the 1980s, or a gigantic, gigantic domesticated cat. He pretty much is like, I, I don't, I don't fully know. I don't know what this is. But the Shropshire jungle cat that he mentioned, um, it pretty much, it, I don't think they really fully determined what it was, but I'm pretty sure it was like a lynx that got killed or something like it, it i've looked up some photos with it i think it might be like a slight hybrid but it, lo it looks like a lynx in some degree okay so the last noted year that i have written down because i didn't go too hard into 2020 2021 2022 because a lot of people were home they were inside so not too many sightings also uh with covet stuff you know, people being scared, people being stressed. I kind of hold hesitation when it comes to paranormal spikes, I should say, between these years. I'm a, I'm a bit more hesitant just because everyone's always on edge right now. Um, it's a very uh, turmoil time of, of our lives. Uh, and it's just, I think that plays into a lot of things. Um, the stress, the anxiety, uh, people being unfamiliar with, you know, this new way of life. So I think reports and sightings that come more recent should have a bit more of a grain of salt to them. So I'm excluding them for now. Uh, but if you guys want me to look into more recent ones, uh, I will. I'll either do like a follow-up episode or we'll post it onto the Patreon. But 2019, before the world was shut down, 
In April of 2019, it was claimed that a big cat was sighted in the uh, Cornish village of Harrowborough after it attacked a dog. Residents claimed that five local pets, uh, pet cats in particular, had disappeared and that a local herd of deer was no longer visiting the fields near the village. They were like, nope, I'm out. A large paw print was identified as that of a panther or a puma. Uh, this was discovered by the RSPCA, uh, and they completely confirmed this. Footage of a black panther-like cat emerged several days later. I cannot get full confirmation as to whether or not that footage is accurate to a puma, because you'll, you'll realize when you look into this that a lot of the footage that gets taken very 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 like debatable um a lot of people often take photos of actual cats like domestic cats or uh feral cats and because of scale and stuff you can't really tell but at least in this case like the paw print this is legit like unless someone went around with a stamp like this is a, a legit identification um as recent as 2019 but yeah so that's pretty much it when it comes to more modern sightings uh, and a sort of overall confusing me trying to condense everything down into a briefer type thing, even though this episode is still super, super long. Again, that's the timeline that we're working with. So late 1950s into modern era of big cat sightings uh, that range anywhere from large domestic cats to lynx to pumas to whatever the heck is going on. But as I'm sure you're probably curious, how credible are most of these sightings? Now, we already had a few where they were determined to be, you know, hair samples or potential photographs and footage, as well as paw prints. Those were there. Like, there is some fairly solid evidence in relation to British big cats uh, compared to, like, other, you know, cryptids out there. Because this is technically not a cryptid. Again, it's, it's a phenomenon. Uh, so let's talk about some of the evidence. Um, in particular, I broke them apart. Uh, first off, we're going to talk about captures and remains. So uh, I'm going to list off some lots of different things. Um, these are all in relation to evidence that was either captured or carcasses or bones that were discovered that were like, hey, this animal was here. So a in 1903, so before all of our more modern stuff, uh, a Canadian lynx was shot in Devon. Uh, it is now on display in the Bristol Museum, uh, and it suggests that uh, it had spent a significant amount of time in captivity and was likely released into the wild. In 1980, a puma was captured uh, in the Inverness Shire in Scotland. And the capture followed several years of sightings of a big cat in that area that matched the description of the one that was captured, which, you know, obviously leads some credence into the idea that most of these are probably true to some degree. The puma was subsequently put into the wildlife zoo in the Highlands Park. It was given the name Felicity. However, it did die and it's now in the museum. In 1988, a jungle cat was killed after being hit by a car in the Hayland Island. The animal was then, you know, stuffed and it ended up in a museum again. Uh, a year later, in 1989, another jungle cat was hit and hit by a car uh, and found on the roadside of uh, Shropshire. So people were just hitting people things with cars. In 1991, a Eurasian lynx was shot near uh, Norwich, Norfolk, and was killed. Um, it had killed around 15 sheep within two weeks. The story was also reported in 2003 that a stuffed body of the lynx was allegedly, you know, in the possession of collectors. Many years later, after this incident, uh, it was considered to have been a hoax, however particularly within the hunting community. Um, but in March of 2006, a police report confirmed that this was actually true, which is crazy. It's just back and forth. Uh, it was probably an escapee from a facility somewhere. Obviously, you know, Eurasian lynxes are, they're still around. They're, they're elsewhere. They're just not in uh, the UK. 1994, there was reports of a large cat with leopard-patterned fur that was shot off the Isle of Wight. 
sometime earlier after feasting on chickens and ducks. Uh, the shooting was not immediately reported by the farm worker involved. However, police reports concluded that the animal was likely an ocelot or a serval, which it looks like an ocelot. There had been reports in 1993 of yet another uh, puma that was captured in Scotland. Uh, this time it came from the Avermore area. Um, this is, again, true. Another puma was captured. In 1996, police in Fintana County in Northern Ireland shot a cat. It was reportedly a caracal, which is like, I think it's like a Middle Eastern type cat. Let me see. Yeah, it's like Middle Eastern, Africa, uh, Central Asia. It kind of looks like a lynx, but point to your ears if you want to look that up. Uh, it's Caracal, a C-A-R-A-C-A-L. And again, this was reported from the police. Uh, this is in Northern Ireland. Uh, more evidence to things actually being out there. In a while, or in a well-reported 2001 case, the Beast of uh, Bartmet, a young female Eurasian lynx was captured alive by police and vets in the Cricklewood, North London area. After a chase across a school playground uh, and into a block of flats, uh, it was placed into the London Zoo and given the name of Lara. Ultimately, it was transferred to Fran uh, France for breeding purposes. And again, just more evidence that things are kind of happening. More recently, in 2017, in November, a trucker claims to have seen three highway workers struggling to lift the body of a dead four-foot black panther onto the back of a truck while he was passing through uh, Northworth. However, I believe they determined that it was actually just a dead black dog that they were loading onto the, the truck. This list that I kind of compiled does not include escapees. So known escaped animals, uh, which, for an example, uh, 1991 had four lions that managed to escape from a circus before being captured in the same day. Known escapes that were very quickly recaptured. Next up, within the evidence and stuff, we have video and photography, which... Again, take with a grain of salt because it's the next level down from, like, solid evidence, um, and it can be faked. Uh, in 1993, a number of reports were made of a black cat in uh, Bedman Moore, uh, nicknamed the Beast of Bedman. And there are at least two videos that were made. Some video evidence uh, was examined by government scientists who concluded that the position of the camera and the animal in the sighting made it so that the cat has about a foot in height at the shoulders. Uh, two years later, another uh, video was captured in Bisbrick next to Gaoling Ming, which was taken of a large cat walking uh, between branches. Uh, people believed it was a puma. I don't think it was actually confirmed. I think it was more so people kind of leaned back into being it like an Iberian lynx of sorts. Uh, but it's highly debated. 1994 had footage of a large black cat that was reported in uh, Cambridgeshire, which was named the Fen Tiger by the media. 2006, a large black cat was reported in the countryside. Uh, footage of the cat was broadcasted on the BBC the next year in 2007. Uh, this was captured in Abenshire. 2009, this was a somewhat busy year. Photograph and video footage of a large black cat was taken by an off-duty uh, Ministry of Defense police officer. The animal was walking along a railway line. This one, I think, is debatable. I think I have seen this footage. Uh, I think it might be a domestic cat. Uh, but that's another one that was reported. Uh, later that same year, again 2009, video footage of what claims to have been a large black cat was recorded in Herefordshire. The sighting of the video footage of the alleged black cat, however, uh, was linked to a spree of sheep killings in the same area. So people, people also, again, are not sure, but it might have some credence to it. 2010, 
footage of what claims to be a large black cat was reported from Glasgowshire. Experts, quote unquote, uh, and I will say experts in quotes, uh, have examined or estimated that the creature was at least five feet in length from nose to tail. But again, it's from a footage, so who even knows? Who knows? Uh, 2011, a family walking in the uh, Facha Bearers Woods in Maori photographed a large black cat matching the description of a forest jaguar. In 2013, photos were taken of what appears to be a large black cat in the estate of Sir Benjamin Slade uh, over in Somerton. 2017, there were five sightings of big uh, cats in Glasgowshire, some with photographic evidence, uh, not all of them, I don't know why. 2017, a mother and her teenage daughter took several photos of what appears to be a large black cat in the uh, Somerset area, which was speculated uh, by Beastwatch UK. People are kind of debating what this is. However, they think that it may be a jaguar or a panther of some sort. A 2017 documentary included footage taken by an off-duty police officer in West, Mil uh, West Midlands, of a large black cat that was then analyzed by experts from South Africa who concluded that the characteristics were that of a black leopard. The expert from South Africa also examined the footage taken of a large black cat from the village Maiden Newton from Derset and said that it was most likely a conclusive evidence so far of a black leopard on the loose in the UK. Again, this was 2017. <laughs> so the next two, again, it's COVID times. There were sightings of the fen, uh, the fen tiger, which we talked about earlier. I don't know how I feel about that one. And then last year in 2021, uh, uh, a large black colored cat was filmed in Flintshire. There's not much more to that. Again, though, take those with a grain of salt. Okay, so... Slightly more credible evidence uh, is the idea that there were also attacks linked to this. Um, in 2000, an 11-year-old boy in Monmouthshire was attacked by what he claims to be was a large black cat. It let him with a five long, or I should say, it left him with five long claw marks on his left cheek. The police called a big cat expert to identify the incident. Uh, however, I do not believe there was any conclusion to finding the culprit. In 2005, a man who lived in uh, Sydenham Park in the southeast London area was attacked in his back garden, which uh, backed into the railway line. The man was six foot and weighed... Uh, about like 200 pounds. Uh, he described the cat as being a big black figure that pounced on him and was considerably larger than he was. Uh, he was left with scratches all over his body. Police were called, and according to the BBC, one police officer saw a cat the size of a leopard dog, or a, God, Labrador dog. So think um, like a yellow lab or a brown, a chocolate lab that sort of size of a cat. So Puma, maybe? Uh, the man who was attacked uh, sustained scratches to his face, and the alleged big cat was named by locals the Beast of Sydenham. In 2008, there was reports of a 74-year-old woman who was attacked on two separate occasions by a large cat uh, in the Scottish Highlands. Uh, leaving her with injuries, but the Scottish wildcat expert concluded that it was most likely a large, feral, domestic cat that was living off in the wilds, or, similar to what we talked about way early on, a possible hybrid with the Scottish wildcats. Again, these are wildcats, even though they're around the size of a domestic cat, so they're not going to treat you... I mean, domestic cats don't treat you friendly regardless, so... Just don't, I don't know. Uh, so in 2019, a man in Cornwell, uh, Cornwell uh, reported that a six-foot black cat attacked him from an open window and was trying to get through the window. 
He described it as being crossed between a domestic cat and a panther, which I do not believe is possible. If anything, it might be like a, you know, a, the the jungle leopard, if anything, uh, or leopard cat. Uh, he was said to have reported it to the police and claimed that, quote, they were not interested. <laughs> it's questionable, but I mean, to be fair, his story is a little out there in some regards. So the last little bit when it comes to evidence that was collected, uh, there was some DNA evidence out there. Um, in 2011, it was announced by the Center of 14 Zoology that DNA testing was carried out by the Dorham University on hairs found in North Devon. Uh, this showed that a leopard was indeed living in the area. Again, this is in 2011. Uh, in 2012, uh, it was announced that DNA testing on two deer carcasses found in Gloucestershire found only fox DNA, despite any locals reporting sightings of what is believed to have killed the deer being a big cat. So, it's interesting. I can't find any other real accounts of DNA evidence being examined, uh, but these are the two prominent ones. One, clearly supporting it, saying that yes, there is a leopard living in this area. Uh, and then a year later, supporting the fact that, hey, a cat didn't kill this deer, two foxes were eating at it, and it probably just died on its own. Uh, but it's evidence. I, I like when things... I, feel like, I like when evidence is, is actually analyzed whether or not it does support the claims or not. Like, we, finding the truth is always the best part, in my, in my opinion. Uh, so, you're probably wondering, uh, we've heard a lot of stuff with, like, local police, you know, zookeepers, uh, water work people. Like, we've had some sort of, like, credible authorities here and there. Uh, but what about the government? What the hell is happening with the UK government? We've gone through dozens of reports already, and like I said, there are hundreds, hundreds of reports every year. On average, I think it's determined that around 200 sightings come up every year uh, of large cats all over the countryside. Uh, so what's the government doing? So in 1988, the Ministry of Agriculture took an unusual step by sending the Royal Marines to carry out a massive search for the Beast of Exmoor, which, again, I believe is the one that's supposed to be a lion, after an increase in numbers of mysteriously killed livestock. Uh, the farmers of the area were complaining over the loss of their livestock and their, the money in relation to them. Uh, several marines that were sent out claimed to have seen a cat uh, sort of fleeting, like in the corner of their eyes, off into the distance, uh, but nothing more than a fox was ever found. Uh, the Department of Environment, Food, and Rural Affairs uh, was publishing, or published a list of predatory cats that they know had escaped into the UK, although most of them had been recaptured. Uh, so again, this is just listing off stuff that the government actually fully did. In 1995, after nearly 20 years of sightings of the Beast of Bodmin, the Ministry of Agriculture officials sent or spent six months examining eyewitness reports, video recordings, and plaster casts of footprints and concluded that there was, quote, no verifiable evidence of the presence of a big cat in the area. Nowadays, and this is more, you know, 2000s onwards, that sort of stuff. Nowadays, the government is very skeptical of big cat reports. Um, despite the fact that, you know, we just had one in 2011 where they said that DNA was true, that there is a leopard out there. <laughs> Overall, I should say that they are a lot more skeptical because I think for the most part, um, people have cracked down a lot on like releasing animals. And a lot of these reports can kind of be drawn back to a lot of those laws starting up between like the 1900s and people just releasing their animals so that they don't get caught. So yeah, so uh, more modern days, the government is more skeptical of British big cats. A spokeswoman from the Department of Environment, Food, and Rural Affairs uh, said the following. Neither Natural England nor Doffrey, uh, which is 
the Department of Environment, Food, and Rural Affairs, uh, has received any credible reports of wild living or breeding big cats in Britain in recent years. Uh, I believe this was from like the 2010s, like late 2010s. Dafra ha- is not currently engaged in any work relating to the management of wild big cats in Britain and has no plans to do so moving forwards. So, that is a lot of the, you know, the government involvement, the reports, all the, you know, credible evidence that was uh, recorded, whether it be literally capturing lynxes and pumas and panthers out there. Like, they have, they, they have been caught. A lot of these have been true. What about the paranormal? <laughs> so, some people think because most of these sightings are of black cats, that people might be mistaking this with what some believe to be the black dog. Which, if you're not familiar with, a black dog or black canine is a specific type of mythological creature um, that is supposedly appears as a large black animal uh, in remote areas, uh, and it, it varies, um, in particular, uh, with Britain, I think it has some of its own variations, but oftentimes it has relations to death, uh, being an omen of death, uh, you know, if you see one, some people think it's like the dogs of the underworld, others say that if you see one, you or someone you know is going to die soon. There's a lot of superstitions surrounding uh, black dogs. Uh, So some people think that perhaps the cats that they are seeing could be mistaken uh, black dog sighting. I don't know. Uh, I just wanted to throw that in there because obviously we're primarily a supernatural podcast. And for the most part, this was not supernatural. And I just kind of wanted to add that extra little snippet in there uh, for fun. But yeah. Uh, overall, that is most, I, I shouldn't say most, because there is a buttload, like a, so many more out there in relation to British big cats or ABCs, phantom cats, or just wild felines located in uh, the UK, which again, most of them were in Britain. I th- most of them were like in South Britain. But, you know, we have stuff up in Scotland, which obviously does have some sort of wild felines. Uh, there was, like, one in Northern Ireland. So it's all the isles of uh, the UK uh, and Ireland. So if you are interested in looking into this, definitely do so. I very much skimmed, like, all the reports out there. There are so many more. And there's just there's way too many to actually get into fully. Uh, furthermore, I, I wanted to do say something. I did cover this topic years and years and years ago over on the YouTube. And if you are listening to this on YouTube, uh, you're probably like, oh, he's actually talking about it because I think the first video was like four minutes long and this is like an hour plus. <laughs> so, uh, if you're listening to it there, you're probably like, oh, damn, when I originally posted it on YouTube, and I'm going to probably do uh, some sort of like compilation of sorts uh, in relation to this, so many people commented about their own personal stories, uh, stories of their neighbors, their family, uh, local legends from their town or their village. Like It was insane. Of all the stories, all the topics I've looked into and covered uh, here and on the YouTube This one has the most personal stories relating to it. So I definitely do want to do some sort of follow-up or bonus thing in which I talk about some of the reports that people commented on. Obviously, I'm going to get some approvals from people. Others, I don't even know if they still have accounts. Like, it's years and years and years old. Um, But that's just something to look forward to. And obviously, adds to me saying that there is so much more out there in relation to British Big Cats And the weird phenomena that they are, like, it's crazy to me to think that there are hundreds of sightings and reports uh, every year all over this place in an area where there should not be this type of cat. Obviously, the largest explanation for all these is just an escaped animal or a released pet 
of someone who got it when it was a cub and then just released it into the wild because that's the most common thing. That's arguably the most common thing, and it's more than likely most, if not all, of the sightings. Um, so I, I find that interesting. I think it's more, it makes more credence to it because it is probably true. Uh, but the sheer volume is what really interests me uh, for this particular phenomenon because it, this sort of stuff happens all over the place. It's not an uncommon thing. Um, I just find it interesting that this is so common <laughs> that it has literally become its own thing. Um, it, it's insane. So yeah, that's what we have for the British Big Cats. I hope you guys enjoyed this coverage of it. Uh, if you did, you know, obviously stick around for whenever I do that bonus thing. Uh, and if you want to support or check out uh, the podcast bonus stuff, you can do so over on the Patreon. That's patreon.com slash realm of unknown, where you get bonus series like one that we'll be posting right after this episode. Uh, yeah, we do a bonus sort of news uh, series every week after a main podcast. So if you want extra stuff after every podcast, you will get it the same day over on the Patreon. So that's four things every month for every, you know, podcast upload. There's also a bunch of other stuff there, behind the scenes content, polls, other bonus series, and just a bunch of goodies. If you can't support the podcast financially though, I get it. It's a crazy time. Uh, leaving a review over on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, wherever you listen to your podcasts. It means a lot, and it really does help, uh, especially with my crazy upload schedules and the algorithms of these platforms. It totally means a lot. Uh, or just leave it, you know, a recommendation to a friend, because everyone listens to podcasts nowadays. Uh, it's very competitive. It's very competitive. Uh, but until then, I that's pretty much it. Um, you know, if you guys have your own stories or you have your own uh, accounts of British Big Cats, feel free to let me know. You can do so with Twitter or Instagram or wherever. We're Realm of Unknown all over the place. So, uh, yeah, I hope to see you guys. Uh, I hope you guys had a great time, and I hope to see you guys next week as we dive back into the Realm of Unknown. <laughs> this was a long one, um, but I, I think this was a good one. All right, guys, uh, have a great rest of the week, and until then, remember to stay spooky. Oh.